Hello everyone, welcome back to Rain and Paws. I'm Mitch and today I'm doing another Dutch Paw. So I'm very, very happy to announce that my Dutch Paw class has sold out. I'm very happy about that. And I am doing this one because this is going to be the basis for my next class. So the first class was reds, oranges and yellows to make a fiery Dutch Paw. This one, we're going to focus on blues. So to start with, we need to mix up some color and I'm going to mix up some Zeus. So the idea is to do blue with a hint of gold. And I'm going to use this little piggy Zeus for this because it's really nice and deep. And I love the effect it gives when you put it with blue tones. So to start with, I'm going to disperse my pigment. And the recipe I'm using has a little bit of Liquitex gloss medium, a little bit of Australian Floetrol pigment and some gloss gel. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix up my gloss gel mixture. I'm going to weigh that out. So I've got my little cup here. I'm going to tear the weight here and we're going to add five grams of this gloss gel and water mix. So this is 50% gloss gel, 50% water. Okay. It doesn't matter what brand of gloss gel you use. And then I'm going to put a heaped a uh, fluid artco spoon worth of Zeus into this and we're going to mix this up so maybe a little bit more so a gram worth these scales aren't exactly the best but they're close enough for what we need now this part of the um, process is called dispersal and we're making our pigment into a paste that's going to dissolve easier into our pouring medium if you skip this step you're likely to get lumps of pigment everything's not going to be dissolved and it's not going to mix properly with whatever you're choosing to use as your pouring medium. So today I'm using Australian Floetrol and Liquitex Gloss Medium as my PM. Now having that gloss gel in the mixture helps to prevent the pigments from separating and it also helps to keep the cells under control in a Dutch pour. So uh, I'm using the recipe based off Canella's video number 345. If you haven't seen Canella's uh, Dutch Paws, she does amazing Dutch Paws and she has experimented with all sorts of different products and video number 345 is when she compares American Australian uh, Flow Troll with the European Flow Troll which is called Old Troll. So give that one a watch if you're working with uh, products that are different to the American products. And this is pretty much mixed now and you can see it's a nice smooth paste but it's very thick. Next, so we added five grams of gloss gel to this. Next, I'm going to add 10 grams, uh, sorry, five grams of Liquitex pouring medium. This is the gloss medium. It's the one with the lime green label. And I'm gonna give this a mix. It's important to mix in between each step. So that everything gets incorporated nicely. And as the mixture becomes more fluid, the bubble should start to disperse. So now it's running off my stick instead of just falling in a big blob. And now we're going to measure out our Australian flow troll. Now I've got 10 grams total mixture here. So we're going to add 20 grams of Australian flow troll for a two to one mixture. And I'm going to do this in two stages again so that I can get everything dispersed at each step and make sure that there are no lumps and clumps and I'm not going to get any boogers or goobers in my paint. Just like this. Once it's all mixed in, then you can add the rest. So we're going to make 20. If you're doing a really large batch of paint, you could do this in three stages just to make it easier. And it doesn't matter if you're a gram over or a gram under. What we're looking for at the end of the day is consistency. So we want to match our base paint consistency with our colored consistencies. Okay. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit more Australian flow troll to make 25 grams. Let's see if that thins it out to the consistency I'm after. And if not, we'll add a little bit of water. I never ever add more than 10% extra. So if we've got a two to one ratio and I'm using 20 percent, uh, 20 grams of Floetrol in that mixture, I never want to use any more than four or five grams more Floetrol because it uh, will cause really crazy cells and lacing. So now I'm just going to add a drizzle of water. That was about three grams. And 
and these are not exact measurements guys like I'm using a scale yes but I'm looking for the texture of the paint and the consistency I am going for is that when I drizzle my paint back into the mixture what's happening on the uh, flat part here is what I call the trace and the trace is about half a second to one second um, and it disappears pretty much almost immediately as it falls in needs a little bit more water and you just want to add drops at a time to get to that consistency and the important thing is that they all match so what I will do once this is mixed up I'm going to do a drip test and I have a wrapped canvas on on the side here that I will do my drip test on so I'm going to mix up my base paints now my white and my black and I will be with you in a minute I'll do that off camera so you don't have to sit and watch Alright everybody, so we are back. I have mixed up all my paints and now I'm going to do a drip test. So one thing that I learned is that when I'm mixing up larger batches of paints, I need to go back to school because I forgot all of my ratios. Um, I completely forgot how they work and yeah, mixed up way too much paint. But it is fine because I am doing a couple of pours today. So it's going to work out fine. Uh, so I'm, I have some Montmartre lamp black paint and I have some Montmartre titanium white paint that I've mixed up into my base color and these have plenty of bubbles in them because I've literally just mixed them up and I wanted to show you guys a tool that I bought from my local automotive shop this is just a little spatula thingy that came with the buckets and these are like 60 cents each but my gosh these reach all the way into these deeper one litre or two litre buckets. I think these are two litres, um, which saved my butt just now. And these were only like $1.30, $1.40 each. And this is 60 cents. So for $3, this was incredible because it literally reaches all the way to the bottom. And it has center lines punched out so that you can thoroughly mix everything in the bucket. Uh, so I just mixed up two litres of paint with that little stir stick and it took no time at all. So I'm very happy with that. And now I'm going to do my drip test. So the reason I have both black and white is because today I am going to do a split base. And this is the class that I would like to teach eventually. So I'm going to try and put down the same sized dot of each of my colors. There's also a little trick I want to show you as well. So when you're mixing up using Australian Floetrol, as we all know, Australian Floetrol makes cell activator. The difference between using it as a cell activator and using it in a paint pour is have a look at the side of your cup when the um, paint clings to it. If it's a cell activator, it will form cells straight away and it will sink and it will um, basically web up. If you've mixed it for uh, any other pour, it will hold its shape because you should have a lot more paint in this and it should be thicker. Something I just discovered. Then I'm going to put my TLP Zeus and you do want to make sure that you're putting relatively the same sized blob which I did not Needs a little bit more then I've got this one here is a combination of um, golden cobalt teal and this little piggy mermaid because I just had colors mixed up this one is a combination of Matisse indigo and Matisse cerulean blue I can already tell that my mermaid one, I put a little bit too much paint down. This one here is Pebeo Iridescent Blue Black. And this one here is uh, Matisse Payne's Grey. So what this test is going to tell me is if all of my colours are the same consistency. So let's tilt. I'm expecting mermaid to run a little bit more just because I had more paint there. And you can see from my test so far that Zeus is a little bit thin because it's running a little bit too much. And my base colors are a little bit too thick. So I'll need to thin those out with a little bit of water and thicken up my Zeus. So I sort of want them all to be at the cerulean level. Um, and we want to try and find a middle ground here. So let's thicken up the Zeus and the Mermaid one. And to do that, I'm going to use a little bit of the Liquitex pouring medium. 
So if you're mixing uh, colors, you could use a little bit of the tube paint that you're using. If you're mixing pigments, the Liquitex gloss medium is going to be the quickest way to thicken that up. And it's going to thicken it up gently. It's not going to make it a whole lot thicker real quick. And I'll just add a little bit of that to my cobalt teal as well. Mixed with the mermaid, so it's a beautiful shimmery blue. Lovely, that looks good. Zeus is still looking a little thin, so a little bit more of that gloss medium in there. And this is where it fine tunes. So you start with a basic recipe, but then you need to learn to eyeball things and fine tune your colors. So I could do another drip test, but I think I'm happy with how everything is coming out and we're just gonna roll with it. So I will thin out my black and white just a little bit and I'm just going to use water for that. because we want everything relatively the same consistency. It was almost perfect until I dropped my stir stick on the floor, on the uh, bench. Lovely. Okie dokie, those are ready to go. Oh, and I need to thin out my cerulean blue combination, just a tad. Not too much, just a little squirt of water in there to get things flowing. All right, let's zoom you out. We will get our canvas set up and leveled and we'll be ready to pour. I'm also going to switch on my macro camera or my macro lens I should say so we can see what we're doing let me grab a paper towel and just wipe this off because I, I like to use these um, wrapped canvases when I've got them to do my drip tests so that I can wipe them off and go again Handy little trick, that way you don't have to keep bits of plastic lying around, just use the back of the canvas and that's good to go for next time. All right, put that aside. Let's get our actual pouring piece in here. Now I have my, oh, I do have some black and some white already mixed up, so I'll throw those in to my main bottle once I'm done here. Let's get our canvas. I don't think I have enough space on my bench. A couple over here because these are quite large. One plate each, one plate each. So the canvases I'm working on are uh, 15 by 30 inch canvases. And this is the size that you'll be working on in my Dutch pour classes, which is very exciting. It's quite a big canvas. It's something that you can take home, hang on your wall, and it's a, a real statement piece. I think this size is really good and it works really well for Dutch pours because it's nice and long and gives you a really pleasing shape. So there we go. There we go, there we go. Right now I'm going to set up my. Okay, we're ready to pour. I've got 19 minutes of recording, so I may pause just before I blow everything out so that I can capture everything. So I'm going to draw a line for where I'm going to pour my base colors and I want it to start. Oh, let's use a ruler, huh? So I can get pretty close to being accurate. Just using a level and let me check that my canvas is level here. Not that it matters because I'm going to be moving it to a drying table, which I've already leveled. And I'm going to be do, doing two split bases today. so. I might as well mark my second one while I'm at it, right? Cool beans. All right, so we are ready to pour our base coat. So I have, I'm going to do the white first and we're going to do what Canela does where she runs a bead 
along the edge first and then down into the center and she does a great big swirl in the center. Now the reason she does this is so that we get a nice even spread of paint and I'm going to bring it as close to or I'm going to bring the paint over the edge and then as close to my line as possible. I should also note that I have sprayed my the back of my canvas with water to tighten it up a little bit. You should always do that before you do a pour so that your canvas is nice and tight and your paint will flow nicely. And I'm using the same spatula that she uses which is the OXO Good Grips spatula and it is amazing. It just moves so much paint so very quickly. And I'm just doing what Canella does. I'm pretty much copying Canella in every way, shape or form here um, because it works. Her technique works. And I'm just using the blade of the spatula to very gently even out all of the paint. So just gliding it across the surface and it's very easy to do with a very light touch to get to all of the bits and pieces and scraping off any excess paint over the edges. So you want the paint level to be pretty much even across the whole painting. So that when you blow it out, the paint has plenty of room to move. Now I'm going to wipe off my spatula. Make sure that I get all of the black or the white off of it so that when I do the black, I'm not gonna contaminate the colors. And they will mix a little bit when we blow it out, but we don't want it to mix beforehand. Just a little bit of paper towel to clean that up. Radio, clean, ready to go. Let's do the black. So same thing, pour on a nice big bead around the edge and then into the center. And I still have plenty of paint left in my cup. Now these are going to mix here. That is fine. We want this to go over the edge and the edges will get a little bit of paint on the sides when we blow that paint out. But we want to make sure all of the long edges are covered because these won't get any paint. So make sure that they are nice and not patchy. Definitely need some more black on here. I didn't pour enough off. Now in the center, it doesn't matter too much if you don't get everything covered because you're going to be putting your colored paints there. Okay, so down this bead, we're gonna be putting our colored paints and they will blow into the base. And again, just evening the paint out, making sure that there are no bare bits of canvas. So on my edges here, I've got a little bit of canvas showing through. We don't want that. Okay. And that seems pretty even to me. Now there are a ton of bubbles in this because I did just mix up my paints. So I'm going to scrape off any excess paint from my spatula into the container, which is just my little cup. And then I'm gonna wipe it off. And wipe it off while it is still wet because once it's dry, it is very difficult to peel the paint off. Or to get the paint off, I should say. But while it's wet, nice and clean. I did binge a whole lot of Canela's videos the other day and they were super, super helpful. And I'm finding great results with this technique. So next we're going to torch. So I've got my chef's torch here and I'm going to torch out all of these bubbles. You don't want to hold your torch too close to the surface. We don't want to scorch the paint. All right, now let's think about how we're going to lay down our colors. And I think I want to work darkest to lightest. So 
let's lay down our Payne's Gray first. And I'm just going to follow the line that we've created. Then let's put down our Pebio Iridescent Blue Black. Then I think we'll do Zeus. Then let's do Mermaid mixed with Cobalt Teal. And then let's do our Cerulean Blue. I think I do want to put a little bit more of the Pebio Iridescent Blue Black just to fill out a little bit more. And I think we're ready to go. So let's torch our bubbles. And the reason you want to torch your bubbles is because they will travel faster than the rest of your paints when you blow them out and we don't want that. And I'm going to blow towards me first because I find that easiest and leap, leap, loop the cord over my shoulder. This is marvelous. Wow. I am really, really loving this. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so the colors in the center are super, super vibrant. And we've got some really cool lacing happening over the edges. I think my paints may be a touch thin, so I could go a little bit thicker. And to do that, I would just add a little bit more of the Liquitex gloss medium to thicken it up and that's going to prevent a lot of that really thin wispy laciness it's so cool okay let's use the torch we're going to pop bubbles and then i'm going to use my smaller torch to create some cells where i can see paint overlapping each other so this torch is a new one that I've bought. It's just tiny. It's got a really nice little flame on it. And it can create some really nice detailed cells in the paint. I'm just going over where I can see bits of color that want to poke through. Yes, beautiful. So let's see what I would like to keep. I really love how this part is mostly white with the color coming through it. And I love how it's coming down over the black as well. Can see a lot of color under here. I don't want to play with that. I think I just want to leave this as is. I'm going to put this one aside and we'll come back and we'll do a second one. Is. 
Thanks for watching. 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 Thanks for watching.